Hi. Hmm. Hi, my name is Jay Wilson from Honest Reporting. In this webinar, I'm going to take a look at using Excel date magic. Well, not really magic at all, but really just a set of Excel functions that I use a lot with my JET reports. From there, we're going to take a look at using NP date filter to create properly formatted date ranges, and then explore how we can use all that to program this into our JET scheduled tasks. And to get us started, I'll introduce the today function. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, the today function is a volatile function. What I mean by volatile is that it's based off of the system's clock, so the value of this function will change from day to day. Now, the today, today, well, the today function is pretty familiar to many of us, but we might not all know about the year function. The year function will take a serial number, it will take a date, an Excel date, and it will convert it into haha, a year. Similarly, the month function will output a month, just as the date day function will output a day. So we can, if we want to think of these as date part functions, we can take a date, say 6-1-2015, and we can convert it into its component pieces, year, month, and day. And then, interestingly enough, we'll take the date function and then reverse engineer it. Give me a year, give me a month, give me a day, and I will convert it into a properly formatted date. Okay, um, the last one of these date part functions that I wanted to introduce is the week day function. If I pass the date into a weekday, um, based off of the return type, one through, and you can see I have a bunch of options, but I'll generally always use one. Um, the weekday function will calculate what day of the week we're on. Now on 6-1-2015, we were on the second day of the week, but today, Today is Thursday, and so as you can see, yeah, Thursday is the fifth day of the week, assuming you start your weeks on Sunday. Now, how does that have anything to do with the price of rice? Well, we can use a combination of the date part functions with the date function to calculate um, intervals. So, for example, year to date. What is year to date? Year to date is the first day of the first month of this year. So if I say that, in the context of the date function. Well, what I need is I need the year of today. And then I want the first month and the first day. And of course, that will give me January 1st, 2015. And if I want to calculate the end of year today, end of year today is usually today's date. Sure. Um, but I'll just put in a cell reference to wherever I have my today function set up. And I like doing it this way because if this entire page is based off of cell C12, when I change today's date to 5, 6, you know, something explicit, then all of my functions will update accordingly. Okay, um, to calculate previous year today, oh, this is where we start getting tricky. We'll say give me the date function, give me the year of, again, give me the year of today, but subtract one year. So year of today calculates out to 2015 minus 1, of course, is 2014, 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 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 2014. And to get the previous year to date end, right, we want 1-22, 2014. We'll say give me the date, give me the year of today, subtract 1, that's 2014. Give me the month of today, that's January. Give me the day of today, that's the 22nd, and life is good. And of course, when I change this value to a different year, 5, 3, 20, 30, yeah, okay, 2014, yep, these dates all update as expected. Now, what's really exciting is when we start looking at month date, this gets a little bit more ca um, complicated, but not so much. Um, I'll say, give me the year of today. Give me the month of today, and give me the first day of that month. 5-1-2014. Okay, cool. Now, what is the month? Um, I'm sorry, let's not call this month today, and let's call this end 
of current month. And let's call this start current month. Sorry, these labels are not great. Okay, if I have the current month and I want to calculate the end of the current month, a lot of us might think to use end of month. And this will calculate the end of the month, and that's all copacetic is easy. But one of the, my issues with the EO month function is it doesn't exist in all versions of Excel. It's not um, backward compatible to the dawn of all Excel, um, whereas these date part functions are. So I want to see, can we, can we get tricky with this? Can we figure out how to calculate this using the date, the year, month, and day function? Well, if I said give me the year of today, give me the month of today, right? We're, we're kind of at, at that same impasse because I don't know. Does this month have 30 days, 31 days, 28 days? Is it a leap year? What if I said give me the next month? This should give me 6-1-2014, right? Because uh, if, I, if I'm currently in five months, five, January, February, March, April, May, if I'm currently in May and I add one, that would get me to June. And if I got June 1st, oh, hey, now, let's subtract one. That gets me the end of the month, but let's simplify our math. Let me move that parentheses. I, uh, my last argument is the day argument. Give me the first day. Subtract one day. Oh, one minus one. I guess that's zero. Give me the zeroth day of the next month. Or give me the next month minus one day. 531. If you can wrap your head around this, then calculating the previous month to date and the previous month end, I should not call this month to date, If you can wrap your head around this, and calculating the previous month end and the previous month start should be a walk in the park. Because now what I can do is I'll go say, give me the date. Give me the year of today. Give me the month of today. So that's five. But I want the previous month, so give me minus one. That's April. And give me the first day of the month. Okay, that part's easy. How do I calculate the end of the month? Well, I'll say give me the start of this month. That would give me January, February, March, April, May, June. January, February, March, April, May. That would give, <laughs> sorry, that would give me May 1st. And if I subtract one day, that would give me the end of May, or sorry, the end of the previous month, April, how many days are in April? 30. Okay, so again, all we did is a little bit of trickery with the date, year, month, and day function to calculate these date ranges. Uh, if I want to play um, with this idea of working with weeks, you know, this is an extension of the idea, but a little bit different insofar as I'll say, okay, I want the start of the current week so that I can calculate the start of last week or however many weeks back you want to go. Well, I know... Now, today's date is 5.30. What would happen if I subtracted the weekday? Well, it would give me 4.26. Now, I'm not great with dates here. Um, how can I figure out what day of the week this is? I'm going to use the text function. The text function allows me to take a date and force, or actually any value, and force how I format it. I want to format this as DDD uh, to spell out the day we're on. So 426 is a Saturday. What was 530? Or sorry, 53. Let's do text value DDD. Huh? That was a Saturday. Let's assume for the sake of conversation that I want my days to start on Sunday. So let me add one. Because I went back. No, I'm sorry. I want the start of my day weeks to be Monday. Let me add two. 
if this Saturday, Monday is throwing us off, let's pick a slightly different day. Let's just pick today. Say it again. All right. Today is Thursday. The start of the week. So, sorry, today's 122, 2015. That's a Thursday. The start of the week was 119, 2015. That was a Monday. That makes sense. Now, if I again, if I want to simplify my math, or rather, if I want to get to last week, I'll say, give me today's date. Subtract the weekday. And then add two days. Remember, adding two days gets me to 119. But I want the previous week. So I'm going to subtract seven days. And then I'll just simplify my math. Positive 2 minus 7 is minus 5. So now I can calculate, aha, uh -huh, this was the start of the previous week. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds to look at your calendar and verify. And then I'm going to say, well, what was the end of last week? Well, that was this date plus six days. And again, we're going to use that text function to verify. I have now calculated the start and end of various periods, year to date, previous year to date, current month, previous month, um, current week, last week. From here, we just have to say, okay, well, now, if I'm working with Jet Essentials, how do I get it into a properly formatted date range? I might use concatenation. I might say, hey, I know Excel. I can concatenate. I can say, give me this, and then concatenate with the two dots, which we need for date reference, date ranges. And then I'll say concatenate start dot dot. End. But look what happens. Because I'm using concatenation, it removes the formatting, and then it just represents the dates as the numbers, the real serial numbers that are stored in Excel. And you might say, well, that's ugly. Let me force formatting with the text function. I see some savvy Excel users do this all the time. They say, okay, well, here's the date. I'm going to force it to always represent as month, day, year. And then I'll concatenate. Oops, excuse me. Sorry about that. And then I'll concatenate. And then I'll apply formatting to my end date. And that gets the job done, but this is not as easy to read. You'd think, Jet Essentials, we're in the business of solving problems. Shouldn't we have a, a way, a fast, easy way of creating properly formatted date ranges to work with our Jet reports? Problem, huh? If you've ever taken any training or worked with me for services, you know that I call the NP function my problem-solving function. I also call it Batman's utility belt. I call it Batman's utility belt because the NP function is designed to solve problems. Each pocket, each what argument does something totally different. And you can ask me about these later. But I want to solve the problem of creating a date range that I can use as a filter. I will use the date filter function, and it accepts two easy arguments. What is your start date and what is your end date? Bam, we're off to the races. NP date filter, way easier to read than this wall of text. And I can just copy paste this all over the place. And that, friends, is how you construct date ranges using a blend of the today, year, month, and day function and date function. Now, how does this all play into my scheduling? Well, let's say hypothetically I built a report where I'm doing, let's say, a sales analysis. And I want to do um, year to date, previous year to date, current month compared to previous month, or whatever my date intervals are. But every time I run the report, I can't be bothered to update the date filters. Or alternatively, what if I'm building a report and I want to have this one report, but I need to, I need to run it several times 
maybe I have a sales report and I want to run it several times. I want to have one output that calculates what was the previous year, one output that calculates the current year, and one output that just calculates the last week of sales. How can I build a report that dynamically assigns dates? Well, what I'll do is I will choose a field, and let's say this is my report date field. I'm going to give this field G28. I'm going to give it a name. I called it the report date filter. If you've seen some of my other blog posts, you know you can manage these using the name manager under the formulas tab. Okay. I called cell G28, report date filter, and that is what I'm going to change in my scheduler. When I schedule my report, come on, scheduler, where'd you go? Still thinking. When I create a new task, let me go ahead and find my document. When I create my task, I input the file that I want to run. So this is my test file, which I'll make available for download. I'll output it just temporarily. I'll say I'll output it to my C drive. I would never do such a thing. But when I go to, when I change tabs, Jet will scan this file and say, are there any named ranges? Remember I created a named range in, what was that, G28, called Report Date Filter. And under the Options tab, you'll see I have the Report Date Filter. And I can change the value that gets stored in G28. I could explicitly say, yeah, I want this report every time it runs to run for, you know, 3 one But that's silly. That makes no sense. In an ideal world, I'd say, well, pass today's date. Or maybe if I'm really sneaky, I'll say pass now maybe do a date range. Give me an NP date filter and then pass the date. And then, you know, if I'm doing year to date, give me the year of today. Give me the month of 1-1. One, one. And then for the end date, give me the date, give me the year of today. Give me the month of today and give me the end of last month. So I'm running from the start of the year to the end of last month, let's say. So ultimately, what I really want you to walk away with is this idea that I can create multiple scheduled tasks of the same file, and then based off of what I put in the options field, we'll determine, oh, is this report running for one month to date? Or is it running for the last week or what have you? Again, in the scheduler, all I'm doing is taking advantage of the named cell reference that I built into the report, my knowledge of N the NP function, and some Excel date magic. My name is Jay Wilson. I'm at onyxreporting.com. You can download this file from our blog site there. If you have any questions about Jet Essentials, Jet Enterprise, or need some services or additional training, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks so much for your time. Cheers.